I'd like to welcome everybody to the monthly Repronym webinar series. Uh, today we have Jeff uh, with a presentation entitled, Damn it, Jim, I'm a researcher, not an ontologist, exploring and using terminologies. And if Jeff doesn't tell you the origin of that uh, saying and why it's interesting, uh, I will add that at the end. So without further ado, uh, the floor is yours, Jeff. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, terminologies and uh, sort of how they're being used and also tools that we're developing around them in the context of Reprenim. Uh, and you've probably seen this if you've attended one of the prior uh, Reprenim webinars. This is the five steps to more reproducible neuroimaging research. And you know, when you look at the last two bullets here, you know, one of the ideas is that by sharing your data and reusing available data, uh, you're able to create larger data sets, right? Thereby increasing study power. And key step to that is the publication of that data. So how does one describe that data? And if you've uh, been listening anything about data sharing, you've heard this acronym FAIR, uh, which relates to findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And within the neuroimaging context, there's a large amount of metadata that is collected at every stage of the data flow process, right? Everything from, you know, the, the original image acquisition, you know, how those images were converted, the actual uh, pre-processing and analyses, you know, the description of the derived data, um, and how that is then actually, you know, described and published uh, requires a lot of details. And so, what the FAIR principles really cover um, is the descriptors, how one creates that metadata, right? So that the data sets and the data that you know, are being published are findable, you know, that one can actually uh, locate them you know, using, for example, you know, Google data set search or you know, tools that uh, you know, we're, we're uh, developing within Reprenim. Uh, there's the accessibility aspect, um, you know, where do I gain access to this, that also has to be described. But then the two uh, probably most important aspects of FAIR, which are actually the, the more difficult ones, is the interoperability and reusability. So how do we describe the data in such a way that one can make them so that different data sets become interoperable and that they can be reused um, in various uh, uh, further analyses uh, that someone might want to do. And when one looks at uh, you know, what it means to be fair, so each of those acronyms has a bunch of uh, sort of uh, uh, guidelines you know, as what one needs to do, right? So if you look at the very top here, you know, this is the very basic uh, level of fair. You know, it's one star, uh, you know, but one of the key aspects there, you know, F2, is that data are described with rich metadata. So metadata, you know, that describe enough of the uh, uh, experiment, you know, so that it is uh, uh, findable. You know, as we move down sort of this, or move up in terms of star rankings, you know, then we act actually start moving into interoperability and uh, reuse. Um, and so when you start looking at the three star, you know, that's where, you know, you're using standards, right? You're using, uh, some representations that are you know uh, shared are broadly applicable and that you know the metadata you know are aligned with some community standards you know you go further down and talks about use of vocabularies that also follow the four fair principles um, so you know there's a lot of reliance on the type of metadata that's used to describe uh, you know, the information in these data sets and, you know, when one sort of looks at, you know, sort of the uh, uh, totality of, of what we're talking about in terms of, you know, ensuring that data, you know, are well described, you know, it's everything from, you know, the data itself is at a, uh, uh, you know, it, it is, you know, well organized, um, you know, it is well represented. There are identifiers that, you uh, can be used to rep to link to both the data, you know, and the metadata elements. There's the standards, you know, that are are used to wrap that, and then you know, again, this metadata, you know, uh, which is based on terminologies, is sort of wrapping all this uh, information. 
so in terms of, uh, you know, the vocabularies themselves, uh, you know, a lot of times, the, you know, these terminologies exist out in uh, the community. So there are a number of ontologies and controlled vocabularies, and they give us, you know, machine readable ways, you know, to explore and, you know, sort of uh, annotate uh, various aspects uh, of the metadata. You know, each of these, you know, within an ontology and terminology, each of these has an actual uh, identifier. Um, and you can develop relationships. So as you move from a terminology to an ontology, you know, that's usually going from a simple descriptive uh, description of the uh, term to adding relationships with other terms. And so... Um, as part of, uh, you know, Reprenim, uh, you know, we're associated with the Neuroscience Information Framework, and a lot of the work we do within Reprenim builds off, you know, the ontologies, the terminologies that we've, uh, that we've developed there. And to sort of give you, you know, sort of an example of, of the use is that, you know, for example, one looks at, you know, the uh, uh, anterior cingulate, or if you prefer to call it the anterior cingulate gyrus, or the anterior your cingulate area or ACC or BA24, you know, we're all talking about uh, similar concepts, right? Uh, you know, the concept, you know, when, when, when we use those words, we understand one another, right? But in terms of the uh, computational systems, they need to have, you know, a specific, a specific, you know, identifier so they know unambiguously, you know, what we're talking about. And so that's where you know, all these variants, the acronyms, the synonyms, you know, within these terminologies are bundled together. And so this is Uberon, uh, an Uberon identifier, you know, which is one of the uh, 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 cross mammalian uh, anatomy ontologies. And, you know, this has then, you know, linkage to all this information. And the important thing also is that we know that this concept, Uberon, based on its other relationships, is talking about anatomy, so it is not the gene ACC, you know, which also uh, exists. So getting back to uh, the neuroimaging workflow and, and you know, how are we using uh, you know, uh, terminologies and what are their uh, 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 sort of uh, entanglements that we need uh, you know, within uh, Reprenim. And so, again, in a previous, uh, uh, webinar with, uh, I believe it was Yaroslav, who talked about, uh, you know, bids and some of the uh, uh, data aspects, right? So bids is a way that one can structure uh, data in a, a very rigorous way, you know, to make sure that those data sets, you know, can be, uh, you know, interchanged, you know, with lab members, you know, with the community. But some of the things, uh, within bids are not extremely well described. And so that's where, you know, within Reprenim, what we've been doing is we've been building out the neuroimaging data model, right, which is a set of specifications to use uh, provenance information and do a deeper description of, uh, you know, the data sets themselves. And this is built upon, uh, you know, semantic web, uh, and pro specifications from the World Wide Web uh, Consortium. So bids in the IDM uh, actually uh, are synergistic, you know, where, you know, within bids, we have this layout based representation of data, you know, metadata is stored in human, you know, in human readable and also machine readable uh, 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 files. Um, however, that information is not always, uh, it's not required to be tied to any, uh, you know, community terminologies or ontologies. And if it is, you know, there's really no um, uh, specification as to, you know, which ontologies one should use. Um, whereas within uh, NIDAM-E, for example, in terms of describing uh, these ontologies, uh, we are providing, uh, you know, terminologies that uh, can be used uh, to create those annotations uh, on top of bids, and these are based then on a set of uh, community ontologies, terminologies, you know, that we are working with uh, as, as part of Reprenim. So it 
provides a, uh, a richer description that's also tied into uh, you know, some of these terminologies. And you know, the, there are sort of APIs and tools we're building you know, uh, on top of 90ME um, and you know, the uh, you know, various uh, uh, ways to work with that. And so in terms of you know, working with uh, uh, you know, 90ME and some of the work in terms of building out some of the terminologies, for 9 uh, uh, Dr. Dave Keeter from UC Irvine is actually gonna have a future uh, webinar uh, you know, within the, the ReaperNIP series uh, in a couple months. So one of the big problems you know, when one deals with uh, terminologies and ontologies is you know, if one goes to, for example, BioPortal, uh, you know, which, is, which was supported by NIH, um, and you know, you go to their you know main page, and there are 835 ontologies, right? So, you know, that's uh, you know the first uh, uh, big hurdle. You know, the next thing, for example, let's say you know you've been doing some free surfer analyses, and you want to say, okay, well, I'd like to actually, you know, uh, you know, note uh, you know what specific uh, structures I have, and link them to actual terminologies, and you do your search at uh, BioPortal. Uh, and then you get back that there are 34 different matches uh, in various ontologies, and you look at you know how many times the caudate nucleus is located in various different ontologies. You know there are a whole number of them. Um, you know everything from uh, uh, you know the, the the tissue and enzyme source ontology to Radlex uh, uh, to uh, to CRISP to Mesh to NCIT uh, foundational model of anatomy. So there's a whole host of them. So the question is. You know which ones do you know which ones should I use? And you know the answer really is that you should you know uh, only really be using or addressing one in some sense, right? Because we're all talking about you know when we talk about the cardiac nucleus, we know what we're talking about again in terms of these concepts. And so Interlex, uh, you know, which I'll uh, you know start uh, introducing now is really meant to be uh, a more researcher-focused uh, way uh, to get access to you know, the terminologies and ontologies, um, and also to, for, to provide sort of community uh, contribution to these terminologies. Um, it also allows linking between terminologies and data elements, and I'll show you a little bit of that uh, uh, as well later on. So Interlex itself is uh, part of a set of tools uh, that we have uh, developed. Um, and so, you know, Interlex is, you know, this community facing portion uh, of uh, the environment in terms of our terminology and ontology uh, developments. Uh, there is then a linkage between Interlex itself and the NIF ontology, uh, which is a formal ontology uh, which is maintained by uh, you know, onto ontological curators um, that we also publish, you know, via BioPortal, and is also available, you know, for use and for download, you know, for any uh, reasoning. Uh, we provide also uh, services uh, via SciGraph, which is a Neo4j uh, ontology uh, endpoint, uh, you know, that are available. And so again, this is part of a sort of a larger environment in terms of you know, providing a way for researchers, you know, to interact with the terminologies and ontologies and then taking that feedback and actually incorporating that in the more formal ontologies, you know, that, that are also uh, used. So just a brief uh, overview in terms of the NIF ontologies. These are actually ontologies that are comprised of a number of community ontologies. So you saw Uberon before for anatomical structures. Um, you know, there are uh, ontologies for cells and neurons that we've been developing, you know, in conjunction with the Allen Institute and others. Um, you know, there's NCBI taxonomy for organism. You know, there's a disease ontology for diseases. And so what we've been trying to do around the ontologies is really pull together these community ontologies, put them together uh, in a standard structure, uh, and then make these also uh, visible through uh, Interlex itself. And if anyone's interested, 
Um, the ontology side, uh, the back end side, these are all within uh, GitHub, so one can gain access to that uh, via the GitHub repo and also uh, get more information there. So getting back to uh, Interlex, so if we uh, were to actually go in and now do a search on Caudate, so uh, if one goes to uh, uh, the search, one then actually gets back uh, a number of different hits uh, related to that. But what you'll notice, instead of seeing, you know, uh, you know, 30 different uh, representations of caudate nucleus, there now is one representation of caudate nucleus. So there's, you know, the, the concept caudate, you know, which is actually the, the, the physical description uh, uh, from the phenotype ontologies, uh, you know, caudate nucleus, which is contained in many different ontologies. And then you'll see that there are then some parts of the caudate nucleus, so the tail of the caudate nucleus. So really what we try to do in Interlex is try to aggregate uh, all the same uh, representations of a term together so that there is sort of one concept, caudate nucleus, that's, that's available to you. And when you want to go to the caudate nucleus, you can see on the right here where it has existing IDs, you can see that there are a number of different identifiers that we provide. So, you know, this is part of Uberon. It's also part of the foundational model of anatomy. It's part of Bernlex, which is part of the NIF ontologies. So you have a number of different representations of this, as you saw in the BioPortal slide uh, earlier, but we've now brought those together. And as part of this, we also, uh, you know, suggest uh, a preferred identifier. So if you were to actually, um, you know, try to use these identifiers, uh, you know, within your own systems, you know, here we're saying that, you know, Uberon is, you know, the most commonly used uh, uh, version of that uh, identifier. If one looks sort of at what Interlex uh, provides, one of the newer features that we've just rolled out, uh, you know, for uh, both uh, work in the, NI, uh, the NIDM terms uh, uh, activities, uh, that I mentioned earlier and some other projects is the ability where we can also, you know, start adding comments so that uh, we can actually get uh, sort of community discussion around some of these new terms. Um, because as you see, there's uh, on the top, uh, there's an add new term um, uh, functionality so that you can actually go in and suggest new, uh, new terms if you don't find anything that, uh, that matches what you need. So if one goes then to explore uh, the caudate, for example, you'll see that you know, the caudate has a number of relationships. So if one clicks over onto the relationships tab, you know, these are different types of ontological relationships that we've extracted from the ontologies and then provided sort of an you know, a easy to use list you know, to sort of uh, go through and, uh, and, and see what is, is represented there. So there's everything from, you know, that. Uh, uh, you know, where, uh, what type of cells, you know, so for example, you know, these spiny neurons are located in the caudate nucleus, the caudate nucleus has certain projections, you know, to other structures, you know, so all this is available within uh, uh, the uh, relationships tab. There are also other annotations that we pull uh, from various ontologies and we list all those as well. So, you know, makes it easy to explore uh, this information. And we keep a, a, a version history. Um, so you can go to the history tab and then see, you know, what has been updated or added. And so this version, you can see in the existing IDs, doesn't have uh, the FMA ID. So that hadn't been uh, harmonized yet uh, with this term. And so that was, uh, you know, one of the differences between version four and uh, version seven. So if I sort of go to uh, uh, sort of switch to another uh, term, so for example, if you were to look at neurodegenerative uh, diseases, um, here uh, what you can see is that there is also, you know, the ability, uh, you know, to view uh, sort of the, the children or, you know, what commonly referred to as the subclasses of uh, the terminology. So here neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, you know, are all children uh, you know, of neurodegenerative disease. So you can actually, you know, if you, you know, from the main term page, 
you can see what the super classes, the parents are, you know, then you can sort of walk down through the tree um, using uh, um, if one actually looks at uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease, you know, and the uh, uh, number of uh, synonyms that, that are there, we can show you sort of using the reference by tab, you know, where this information is actually um, used in various data sources uh, that we're starting to begin to map. Again, these are our recent activities that we're, we're starting. Um, and so you can see that, you know, the system is able to tell you, uh, you know, a specific data source, where in that data source, um, and this is something that we're uh, also going to be building into the, the 9DM tools that uh, Dave Keeter will be talking about. Um, and these can then be curated so that we can then actually create um, a library of these uh, terminology and data mappings that anyone uh, can use. So when one actually goes in to uh, create a term, uh, you know, within Interlex, uh, one of the uh, uh, important things that we do is that, for example, you know, if if I had a you know my own version of, of Parkinson's, so Parkinsonian disease, right? Uh, and I didn't notice it or, you know, I just went in to try and create a term. What we actually try to do is, again, let, uh, you know, the, the researcher know that, you know, there are potential matches for this term. Um, and so basically, you know, again, highlighting the fact that, you know, we're not trying to uh, sort of create uh, uh, a terminology, uh, you know, with multiple, uh, versions of a term, what we're actually trying to do is, again, uh, develop these uh, concept uh, uh, pages, you know, where these concepts are represented and linked to, uh, again, you know, the various ontologies that they may be coming from. So one of the big issues, right, with dealing with data descriptions um, is not just some of the terms that are used, for example, you know, again, if you're doing free surfer measurements of the caudate, you know, uh, and, and being able to identify that properly, but, you know, what are the actual descriptions of the data elements? And so, for example, in bids, there is the participants file, uh, you know, which has information on, you know, the various uh, demographic assessments, you know, and other, uh, measures uh, that have been gathered on the subjects. Um, but again, the descriptions are, uh, you know, don't again have to be tied to uh, sort of a common, uh, you know, framework uh, you know, for understanding what the data elements are. And that in itself is a difficult task uh, on its own. Uh, you know, if one goes to, you know, for example, uh, the, uh, the NDA uh, common data elements, you know, they're over, you know, quarter of a million of them. You know, if you go in and look at age, you know, there are lots of different versions of age. There are lots of different, you know, uh, data elements related to handedness. Um, you know, so how do we, uh, you know, start dealing with, uh, you know, uh, developing mechanisms to uh, be able to uh, find out, you know, that similar data elements were used, you know, in regards to handedness, in regards to, uh, you know, for example, brain volume measurements. And so what we've been developing is the concept of a federated data element. And so this is really, if one, if one looks at it, looking back to the description of FAIR, this is a, a, a FAIR description of a data element. And so what we're doing is that we're augmenting these data elements Right, so you can have a caudate left volume from free surfer and one from ants, right? But technically, that is a measurement that has a number of properties. And so, what we're trying to do is make it easy for people to describe, uh, you know, these data elements with a standard set of properties. Uh, you know, in case of uh, you know these measurements, you know, you have units. You know, what is the measurement about? Um, you know, so it's, it's about the caudate nucleus, what type of measurement it is, you know, so it's, it's a volume measurement. Um, 
you know, and then, you know, you know, it does this measurement, for example, how to have a laterality, you know, is it on the left or is it on the right? Um, so again, you know, trying to develop a framework for a uh, description of the data elements themselves, you know, rather than, uh, you know, trying to say that, you know, you know, the measurement I did you know, was this common data element or that common data element? Because as new tools get developed and, you know, new uh, uh, atlases, for example, that sit behind uh, the, uh, uh, the volume extraction, the, 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 the anatomical extraction uh, for uh, the volume measurements, you know, get updated. Um, you know, technically they're not the same common data element, right? But they still have the same qualities in terms of, you know, uh, you know, how they can be described in terms of, again, what the measurement is about, what type of measurement, uh, and, and so on. And so within uh, an IDM environment, uh, you know, what we're developing, again, are a set of tools. I'm not gonna go into those tools today. I'll leave that for Dave Keeter. But what these uh, tools really uh, are meant to allow is for someone to go in, you know, look at their uh, bids data set and start generating, you know, the, the associated IDM, and do the association of, you know, the, the, the terms, the data elements that were used within, uh, you know, the data sets to start to be aligned to uh, these community standards, right? So we're trying to make it easier for people to do those types of alignments. And so, for example, if one actually looks within Interlex, Interlex also supports. Uh, you know, the search across uh, common data elements. So if you, for example, type in handedness and look on the left, you'll see that there are a number of different types. And so there's a CDE type uh, that we have. And you also notice there's a PDE type. So the PDE is a personal data element. And so that's one of the elements that uh, the 9DM tools generates is that you do have, have sort of a new data element that doesn't exist. You know, we also register that and then you know, can build associations on top of that. So going into, again, handedness, you know, you select the, the common data element facet. You know, and there are a number of, uh, again, handedness in inventories that are out there and, and, and subscores. So for example, block bottle there is uh, uh, one of the questions in terms of uh, the handedness or uh, inventory in the uh, uh, NDA. Uh, you know, if I look at uh, the handedness inventory, what we do when we bring these in from uh, NDA is we also import the annotations, you know, make those available uh, to you. Um, and uh, also then, for example, if you look at the inventory, we have then the, uh, uh, you know, the children of uh, the common data, data element inventory in this case are, for example, the, the various uh, questions that uh, explorers that are part of that. Now going back to the uh, Cardi volume example uh, from uh, the volume metric measurements, you know, you search for Cardi volume in terms of a CDE, you'll see you'll get, uh, you know, the ants, the least of the volume metrics uh, return. Um, you know, when I actually go and look at uh, the free surfer volume metrics, um, you know, we'll get the actual identifier, you know, for what it is in the NDA, uh, you know, have, uh, so we have the link uh, to that, but then we also have, you know, the various annotations in terms of, you know, how the NDA has described this in terms of, um, you know, what type of type it is, you know, is it, is it required? Um, but then if one goes to relationships, you see that we're starting to try and represent, um, you know, these relationships and how they might uh, relate to one another. So we have uh, a different relationship in terms of, you know, is federated under. Um, and so that says that basically, you know, you have this free surfer uh, common data element that is associated with this higher level concept. Um, and when we look at that higher level concept, this is where you can see those descriptions of what it means, um, you know, to be, uh, a caudate uh, volume measurement uh, in terms of, you know, how we would like to represent it in terms of, you know, what the units are, you know, what type of measurement it is. And so again, this is, uh, you know, uh, sort of very new work within ReproNim. And so this is, uh, you know, where we're still doing, uh, you know, a lot of work. And this is also work that's being done in 
a concert with the International Neuroinformatics Coordinating Facility and a working group there in terms of helping define you know, how we want to deal with these uh, cross uh, data element uh, mappings. Okay, and uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, access uh, to these uh, 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 tools in addition to the user interface, um, we also have a number of uh, uh, services. So again, uh, you know, the Pi 9 dm uh, tools and services use the APIs uh, that you see on the left. And so those are also available uh, uh, for use to gain access to that. And then, if, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, sort of the ontologies on the back end uh, that come out of this, that's where uh, there's some Python utilities uh, that we have uh, made available. Oops. And so, uh, you know, I hope I uh, sort of gave everyone sort of an overview of uh, what Interlex uh, uh, can do. And again, this is something that is being actively developed, um, you know, within uh, uh, Revernim uh, and some other projects. And so, you know, if, if anyone is, is, you know, using these services, using uh, Interlex itself, uh, you know, uh, feel free to, to drop us uh, uh, a note, uh, you know, if there's anything, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that you're interested in in terms of uh, uh, what Interlex might be able to do for, uh, for one of your projects. So I'll uh, be happy to take any questions and uh, uh, let everyone know that there, the next, uh, the webinar uh, next month is, uh, Introduction to the Reprogram Training Program, uh, and I believe I'm not sure, Julie, if that was JB that was going to be uh, presenting that. Yes, it is going to be JB, Pauline. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Um, it's sometimes hard to take questions over the Zoom, but uh, if there's any intrepid folks out there who want to either speak or type a question, we certainly have some time. If you want, I can always count on Aaron for a question. <laughs> Yes, hello. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't actually have time to delve into questions, but I will certainly have questions as we start to apply these tools ourselves. So we have a project here in Arkansas where we will be applying um, all of these tools that you've discussed. Uh, and I'm sorry, I've had to run in and out today. I've got a okay. busy day. But I am hoping that this is all recorded because I do want to share this uh, presentation with my colleagues. And we will be getting in touch with you, Dr. Greta, because we are certainly wanting to uh, apply uh, these tools in our project. So that's right, and, and, and definitely, if, you know, if, if you know, you'd like sort of a, uh, a walkthrough as well, where we can, you know, go through, uh, you know, some of the questions you have, I mean, we, you know, we'll, we'll we're more than willing to set up a, you know, a follow on Zoom conference, you know, if it's something you know, more directed you know, that you'd like. Well, I can guarantee we will take you up on that kind offer. So thank you so much. Okay, and then thank you. Uh, Petra had a question. Uh, so given the world word cloud on this last slide, I wonder if you're using some sort of TensorFlow NLP processing type tools to curate the ontology as it comes in. So uh, in terms of the ontology curation, um, that's actually done by a, by a human. So going from the terminology, terminology to the ontology, you know, making sure that um, the relationships are well described and the modeling is done correctly, you know, in terms of the OWL uh, uh, modeling language uh, that's being used there, uh, usually requires a human. However, we are using uh, NLP tools to actually help build out um, the terminologies. Um, and so that's probably something that Dave Keeter will talk about uh, in his presentation, but we have been applying uh, uh, NLP techniques to both, uh, for example, data repositories such as uh, Open Euro um, and to uh, uh, you know, some other artifacts to actually try to start uh, sort of extracting uh, uh, terms that we may not uh, already have in the uh, in the terminology, but that exists in the in the literature and in the data sets. Okay, thanks, Jeff. 
And thanks, Aaron. And I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I saw you on the list. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions out there? If not, I'd like to uh, thank Jeff and thank all of our listeners currently. And uh, yes, oh, also Aaron asked, this, is this being recorded? Yes, it's recorded. Uh, and we, I'll repost that in Twitter. It'll be on the website. And um, uh, there's a whole sort of webinar series of all of the recordings of the webinars. Uh, and as Jeff mentioned, uh, next month will be uh, JB Pauline and some training uh, opportunities for training and learning about uh, reprint and things. Uh, and the month after that will be the aforementioned uh, Dave Keter digging deep into Python IDM uh, tools. So thanks all. Uh, see you online. See you in a month. Uh, stay out there and stay reproducing.